There are two different ways that we can hydrate or add a water molecule to an alkyne. The first one that we're going to look at uses reagents that resemble the uh, alkoxymercuration demercuration of an alkene and also the acid catalyzed hydration of an alkene. So the reagents, this is not a two-step reaction, all at once, sulfuric acid, water, and mercury sulfate. This does a Markovnikov addition of the water molecule to the carbon-carbon triple bond. So it gives us an alkene because we are adding one water molecule and it is being done Markovnikov. So I'm going to use a different color here, meaning that the hydrogen is added to the same carbon that already has a hydrogen present and our OH group is added out here. This molecule that is produced in this reaction is called an ene all. It has both the alkene functional group and the alcohol functional group, so it's an ene and an all together. The ene all molecule is unstable and it is not isolated as a product of this reaction. It immediately undergoes a change called tautomerization. I'm going to write that down in a minute. It rearranges itself to form a molecule that is more stable. So bear with me with this rearrangement. Um, we don't see a change to the carbon skeleton or the hydrogens that I've already drawn. What we see is, I'm actually gonna use a third color. So this hydrogen that's on the oxygen ends up moving out to the end of the molecule and the carbon-carbon double bond swaps over to become a carbon-oxygen double bond. This molecule, which is called a ketone, is the actual product of the reaction. The rearrangement that's taking place in here is just simply because the ketone is a much more stable product. So this tautomerization process does look pretty crazy, um, but it's actually very easy to understand with a mechanism. So let's go ahead and, and draw the mechanism out. And I'm gonna use the same, same molecule or enol with just the R to represent the R group. And this, the tautomerization reaction is actually taking place due to the acid that is present, the H2SO4. In this reaction, what happens initially is the carbon-carbon double bond reaches out and grabs another hydrogen from the H3O+. And this is a Markovnikov addition of that extra hydrogen atom. So it's going to go right there. That's the one that I just drew. And we have our OH group still out here. Now we have a positive formal charge on that carbon. The uh, lone pair of electrons on the oxygen move down to form the carbon-carbon double bond. This is a resonance structure. So that just kind of helps delocalize that positive charge. So now the positive charge is up on the oxygen. And of these two resonance structures, even though it's not great to have a positive formal charge on the oxygen, it's better to have a positive formal charge on the carbon. Um, this carbon-oxygen double bond is particularly stable. So the water molecule that was left over after this reaction took place is going to come along and grab that extra hydrogen off of the oxygen so that gets rid of the positive formal charge and we end up with the ketone product. So that's how the reaction takes place. Um, for an anti-Markovnikov hydration, 
the process looks very similar to the anti-Markovnikov hydration of alkenes, the hydroboration oxidation reaction. In that reaction, it's a two-step process, just like we see here with the alkynes, and the reagents for step two are the same, whether we're working with an alkene or an alkyne. So with an alkene up here, we had BH3THF, and here we have a slightly different boron reagent. This is dicyamyl borane followed by hydrogen peroxide in water. And again, as we know, this is going to give us anti-Markovnikov addition of water. So that means the hydrogen that we add is going to go on the other carbon and the OH goes on this carbon. And again, this is still an enol. Anytime we have the OH group that is bonded directly to the alkene, it's always going to be an enol. Unstable, not isolated. It's going to immediately tautomerize. So for the tautomerization, we're going to convert that carbon-carbon double bond to a single bond, carbon-oxygen single bond to a double bond. So we're just changing the places of that double bond. And we are moving a hydrogen. We are moving the OH hydrogen. It's no longer here. It's being moved to this position right there, just like that. This is an aldehyde. Let's look at, um, oh, before we move on to look at a couple examples, there is one alternative to the reagents that we use for this reaction. So in step one, you could also use a reagent called 9BBN. Step two would still be the same. So let's look at some examples of this in action. Here is an alkyne. As you can see, we're doing this with a terminal alkyne, just like with the previous reaction. This can be done with an internal alkyne, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to do it with an internal alkyne because you end up with a bad mixture of products. So we typically only want to do this with terminal alkynes. And for me personally, even though I know there's gonna be a tautomerization in, in both of these reactions, I always like to start by just pretending like there isn't tautomerization. So I am drawing my carbon skeleton one, two, three, four, five, and I'm changing my triple bond to a double bond, and I'm doing a Markovnikov addition of water. So that means it looks like this. And that helps me get my carbon skeleton correct. And then once I've drawn that out, and that's just for my own reference, then I go ahead and do the tautomerization, which means I'm gonna shift my double bond from carbon-carbon to carbon-oxygen. Because I'm using line structure, I can go ahead and just get rid of drawing out those hydrogens, and there is my product of this reaction. I do have three hydrogens out here, but I, like I said, because I'm using a line structure, I'm not going to draw them. So here is our anti-Markovnikov addition. I recognize anti-Markovnikov because of the peroxide. So I'm going to start by drawing the alkene anti-markovnikov means i'm putting my oh group out here i've got hydrogens like this and again this is the enol that's not isolated i'm only drawing it to make sure that i'm getting my carbon skeleton correct now i'm going to take the carbon carbon double bond and i'm going to move it to the carbon oxygen position i'm not changing the place of anything except for there is a one hydrogen that's being shifted around because it's a line structure, I don't need to draw hydrogens in if I don't want to. Um, but we do have one hydrogen here, that's this guy. We have one hydrogen here, that's this guy. And then this hydrogen has been moved out into this position there. So here are the, this is the only product formed from this reaction. And this is the only product that we get from this reaction.